everybody, welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your hosts Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. We're here with uh, Connor Brogdon from the Philadelphia Phillies, from Madera Liberty Ranchos, Fresno City College, and Lewis and Clark uh, University. And um, <clears throat> we talked to him before, and it was right before he got called up, so we had to bring him back, get all the good stories, the juice, the gossip, everything that goes with being a big leaguer, and uh, also being in the World Series and absolutely dealing this year. Yeah, it was, uh, for those that want to go back, episode 26. It's been that long. It was episode 26? 26. Dang, and we're at 184? 84. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. It doesn't seem like that much time has, uh, has passed. No, it didn't seem like it was that much that long ago, but I guess it was 2019 before COVID. Thanks for coming back, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for How long me. are you back in town? Through the holidays or? Yeah, I'll be here through Christmas. Nice, yep. nice. Um, have, have you been paying attention? Before we jump in all the fun stuff, there has a lot, a lot of stuff been going on free agent-wise. Have you been paying? I mean, I'm sure you do. Or is it your time to like get out of the game, not focus on all the free agency stuff? Although I know your team's kind of benefited for some moves recently. Yeah, a little bit of both. Definitely paying attention, but trying to stay away from, you know, thinking about too much baseball. But yeah, no, the Trey Turner addition's huge. Um, really excited to have that guy behind me. And it's a lot better having him behind you than pitching to him. I know that firsthand. So um, yeah, huge addition. Matt Strom, I didn't really know too much about him before we picked him up, but I know he's really good too. So same yeah. with uh Taiwan Walker's another oh, yeah. one. Huge uh, pick up there too. Yeah. I mean Trey Turner's obviously the big big name out mm-hmm, there. Right. Um it's a lot of money, man. I would yeah. judge. I mean Judge is probably the biggest one that everybody's been waiting. Well the we've talked about it. I'm actually happy. I mean yes, it's it's a lot of money. It's it's more money that you th- than you think players would be worth, but I'm not there in that situation. And I would be also the one to take, if somebody's going to give me that much money, I'm not going to say no, but I, I am happy that you see Trey Turner and judge both take less money to go where they want to go. Ultimately. Are you saying less money? You mean less money that the other teams offered? Yes. To go. Yes. That, I mean, it's still that makes me happy time. because that's what I've always been talking about is like Chris Bryant took a shit ton of money to go to the Rockies and lose. Like I hate seeing players take a bunch of money to go lose. Like the, the point of this game is to get to the world series and win a world series. And you know, you want to go win. It's, it sucks going to the ballpark knowing you're probably going to lose today. You know, <laughs> right. Am I right, Connor? I, I don't I, know. I Luckily don't. I've never been in that position. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing with judge, I told you this is like the Yankees make sense. And not just because it's the Yankees, but that organization will always put try to put themselves in a position to win. Mm-hmm. They're never going to go and just say, all right, we're going to be rebuilding the next three to four to five years. That's yeah. not how they operate. Whereas the well, Giants, I don't think not, the not city of New York would allow them. No, to but I mean, I mean, I'm not hating on the Giants <laughs> because they had their dynasty run here this last decade. Um, and, you know, the year before last, making it to the playoffs um, and winning the division. And over 100 games and having a great season. It's just the Yankees aren't going to have that kind of just complete drop off. No. They're always going to invest into winning. Kind of like what the Dodgers do, what the Phillies are doing, what the Braves have done, the Mets are doing, the Padres are doing. Uh, like, you know, last year's one of the, you see all these big money teams making it. They, the, the Astros, you know, I think the Indians were the, the lowest payroll to make it to the mm-hmm. postseason in a very young team. So I get what you're saying too. So, it, but it, uh, it's just crazy money. Like, it's... What did you see on TikTok? What was the... She was... It was a... She, it was a I don't know who she was. She just said, it's hard to, like, fathom giving that much money, $360 million, to somebody that has to catch the ball, throw the ball, and hit the ball. Like, it's easy to do. <laughs> I mean, it, it, she has a point, but it is really hard to do. If you've never done it, like I said, I I'd never, he would never, I would never get hit off Connor. <laughs> I said that. Like I would never a hundred times out of hundred times, he could tell me the changeups coming every pitch, and I I wouldn't hit it unless he just happened to hang one, which you know could happen. It's yeah. happened before. It, it's a, <laughs> I know, but but you're talking. Well, not that Chad couldn't have been a big league hitter, but right now you're facing big league hitters. What is that? I mean. We, you know, I was I watched ours. This is probably like two months ago, our first time with you here. Um, 
and it was on the it just popped up on the part where we were talking about preparation. How different is it big leagues versus triple A? Because triple A seemed complicated at times. There's a lot of work going on other than just you getting called to the bullpen and going and pitching. How different is it from even you know like do you know a. what innings you have and what hitter like is it different? Do they have it laid out for you? In in triple A, at least this last year, not, when I was there in 2019, it was a little different. It was more just go off the field of the game. But lately, it's become more of like a they schedule your routing type deal. Um, so when I, w- when I got sent down at the beginning of this last season, uh, yeah, I pretty much knew when I was going to throw pretty much every night, which is, yeah, so it's it's like spring training almost. Um, so it's, there's not a whole lot of game feel. And, yeah, just that alone is completely different, and not much less the, the talent of the hitters too. So, Like getting to the big leagues – do they have, like, all right, in this, we're playing whoever it was. Who was it? Who just won the World Series? The Astros. The Astros. You have these guys. <laughs> yeah, those guys. Or are you going to be that, like, you came in and threw four innings, that long type guy. Did they have anything set out for you? Um, In the World Series? Yeah. Uh, Basically, not, not set out, no, but. I mean, we kind of had a pretty general plan for those, especially like when the game that Syndergaard started, we knew he was not going to go more than I I think like the original plan was three innings. And I think he went back out for the fourth, if I'm not mistaken. So um, we knew he was going to be short. So we knew they're going to call in the bullpen early. And then I think there was one other, I think Falter in the, might have been the NLCS maybe. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But whenever Bailey Faltered started for us, we knew he was going to be in a similar situation to Syndergaard. So, like, you don't have a schedule. Kind of just an set. opener. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't know that you're, when you're coming in, but you know there's a really high likelihood that you're coming in and coming in early. So, Yeah, I, we'll get into the – because I got a couple more que- – that's a good question. I had another one regarding the World Series, but I wanted to – what we – Let's take it back. Let's take it back because, like Chad said, we missed the call-up. Mm-hmm. And it's been almost two years since we've had you. And that's like one of the favorite stories we get is uh, the call-up story. So how, what happened? What was, the, what's your call-up story to the Phils? Um, so it was peak COVID time. I was at the alternate site, which was located at our AAA, which is an hour, like, I think north of Philly in uh, uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I was just hanging out in my hotel room playing some video games, actually. And the farm director at the time. <clears throat> called me and I we were kind of struggling a little bit and they had made a few moves uh before this so when I saw his name pop up on my phone I had a pretty good idea of what was about to happen and I was like I said playing video games so kind of flipped the old earpiece <laughs> off like this and stuck the phone in there <laughs> you didn't even and, take your whole headset yeah. off it no nah, because well it's like he was one in of those the middle games, of the game I, yeah it's one of those games where if you quit um what game like, was it's, it? it's like very punishing uh counter-strike global offensive Okay. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to take like the the time ban that you get for quitting early. Uh, so yeah, I kind of flipped it out. There. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sounds good. And got got the old you know protocol. I'm gonna go to the field, and I think it was like two hours. I gotta go to the field in Philly. So finished the game out, packed it up, went, and then and yeah, I don't think I pitched that night. But yeah, that's basically it. Who was the first call you made? I, First call. I don't. I don't know about the first call. I sent a bunch of texts. Yeah. Um, first text I think went to my cousin Jonathan, um, just because I, I think I happened to be texting him at the time. Was he on the other end of playing? No, you guys, no. you guys aren't playing. No, <laughs> no, no. But we're yeah. He's like my big brother basically, because um, I'm an only child. So it's closest thing I had a big brother. So I text him uh, right away, and then I think I text my parents, my girlfriend, um, pretty much everybody else after that. Yeah. What was that two hour trip like? I mean, they got us not too far. Yeah, because I think it's like an hour drive. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if I remember the drive. Was there any yeah. like expectations, or just like be here, like just this is the itinerary? You'll get your details when you get there. Like pretty much, yeah. Just I think they gave me like stretches at three type deal, and that was about all I knew. So I just yeah. So what? So you get there? So you have it? You have you went the night before? No, they called me up uh, that day. So that, okay. they call, I think he called me around like maybe like. Noon or one o'clock, and I had to be there about three. So I just packed up real quick and drove. Yeah. What was walking in the clubhouse like? I was really nervous because <laughs> I, I mean, there's so many big name guys in there, and I, just, 
I don't, yeah, I kind of had, you know, butterflies in my stomach type deal and didn't want to step on any toes, get in anyone's way. Cause you, you always hear like when you're a rookie, you just stay out of everybody's way. Don't bother anybody. So, uh, yeah, sh- trying to mind my P's and Q's and the first player that kind of contacted or reached out or congratulated you. What was that? Did anybody um, do you remember? I want to say like pretty much like every single face I saw when I walked in said something like, you know, Hey, nice to meet you. Congrats type deal. Um, but I mean, obviously like when guys like Arietta and Harper and Reese come up to you and, you know, shake your hand and stuff, you, the, they stick out a little bit. So it's always cool. Did you get at all emotional? You don't seem like an emotional guy, especially <laughs> like watching you pitch. Like I never know if you've pitching bad or good, which is a good thing, to, I guess. But like seeing your jersey and your locker, and like this is real. This is this is the real deal. I have come so far, and all the ups and downs for this moment. You know. Yeah, that was that was kind of a cool moment. I don't I don't think I really the, the like big league like thing hit me until we started getting fans in the stands because it's not the same <clears throat> pitching. It's almost like a like a live BP kind of, you know, like it just doesn't seem real, like an inner squad or something. And then when uh, 2021, when we had fans in the stands, that's when I kind of realized like this is, you know, for real now. It's different than whatever, <laughs> the minors or anything else. So, And the debut? We can skip that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, we we posted on it and Chad you know. did. Not Chad. It was but. it was a welcome to the big league moment. It was uh, it happens. Was it Framer? Was it, who was it? It was, it was pa- Cleveland. Pa- pa- right? pa- uh, it was Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore, that's Pedro right. Severino. Yeah, first pitch. Hey, yeah. it happens. You got it out of the yeah. way. No, it happens. Well, and you sure. did. I, you did get the st- a strikeout, right? Was it yes. that that inning also? Uh, I or was think, it the I next think, outing? No, I think it was that inning. No, I, I definitely because I, I threw like two innings. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got. I, yeah, I, got, I think I got a strikeout later that inning. But yeah, I think so. I came in with like two runners on mm-hmm. and uh, just cashed those in right away. Wasted no time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, from the bullpen to the mound, like, what are, what's going on? Like, are you like? Because I don't know. Like, I'm thinking. I don't either. I would be. I've never been there. I would be. I wouldn't even Shitting know myself. Yeah, basically. But he might be in the zone. He might be. Well, it's like we were talking. We've talked. Know who he's facing. We've said this a bunch of times about you. Like you look so even kill. Yes. Yeah. Like you never see whether it's that is he pissed? Is he he's just locked in? Were you like, oh my god, here we go? Or were you at the top of my leg lift? I sh- <laughs> legitimately had the thought it, I'm. <laughs> throwing a pitch in the big leagues right now and then not a half second later i was watching that same pitch <laughs> fly into the left field bleachers and it's yeah it's crazy how that works but yeah no i definitely like i remember taking a really deep breath as i walked down the steps from the bullpen and then yeah it seemed like the next thing i knew i was giving up that home run so it just it all happened so fast do you think about this is not a, I, I don't want to because it's it's you're more established now. Yes. Like, are you thinking shit? My my, it's done. They're gonna. I'm gonna be gone as soon as I walk in the dugout. They're gonna tell me to get my shit and leave the stadium. I didn't think like that. No, <laughs> but I definitely thought it's it's only up from here. <laughs> I love it. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I love it. Um, it uh, Chad did post that, but right? What I don't even remember what you said. And I was. Just I thinking, said, "Welcome to the." <laughs> yeah, it was one of many. You know, it's gonna happen. I mean, you're a pitcher in the big leagues. You're not gonna not get a home run hit off you, or you know, it's gonna happen. Got it out of the way. It was just a fun, fun thing. You probably didn't see it. Your mom, your mom liked. I'm it. Sure, yeah, I'm sure my mom <laughs> saw it for sure. Nah, your mom yeah. was a gem. It was a, I, It wasn't anything bad. It was just a fun welcome to the bigs. But then I also posted the strikeout. I know. Okay, <laughs> I know. <laughs> just you know. Chad being, I'm just kidding. Uh, but this, no, this, so you you get through, and uh, at some point, how long do you did it take you to feel like, okay, I can, I'm comfortable here. I'm comfortable on the mound. I'm not not worried about anything else other than executing pitches. It took a while. Um, I remember when I, I, I got sent down pretty quick. Right, yeah. I remember. Um, and even went back down to the alt site and didn't feel good there either. Um, and then I, I don't know. I think maybe just uh, – I think there was a game against the Nationals. They brought me in in like a it's like eleven to one situation, um, 
And I think I just remember thinking like, yeah, we know what's the worst that could happen really is, you know, just kind of no pressure, more more or less, just, just take the sign that JT puts down and just try and execute it as best you can. And uh, yeah, that role kind of rolled into the, the rest of the season. I think I had a couple of good outings in Tampa Bay to end that year, kept that momentum going into the next season. And yeah, I think it was about that time that I kind of realized that I could at least stick around you know and mm-hmm. not um because obviously i was not sure when uh i got called up the first time and got freaking tittied all over the place and then they sent me down right away so yeah um it was yeah shortly after they called me up that second time i kind of got a little bit more comfortable and then you get to camp this uh this last season you break camp right out of out of camp there we go come back yeah. down to us right <laughs> well when table. you're six nine well hey um what I was gonna get into like because you mentioned JT like and I asked Chad, I don't I don't know the relationships and how they are throughout the season, but like guys come up, guys come down. Like, is it different with the every pitcher or is he I mean, I mean obviously you guys all have different shit, but what is that relationship like with him? And how lucky are you to I mean he's one of the best catchers in the game. The best, I would say. Yeah. Um I mean obviously I have a little bit of bias there, but um no, I don't. I don't think you're off. Yeah, on that. No, I mean, Yachty's no, gone. No. Right, Yachty's been that guy. But for even a long then, time. JT the last two to three years has been tops defense and offense. Yeah, yeah, all facets of the game. I mean, he stole Throwing, like twenty-one yeah. or twenty-two bags this year too. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, he, I mean, it's a really good relationship. He's very easy to communicate with, um, and I think it goes for me and for every pitcher, no matter how much time you have. Like he's not one of those guys that it's hard to approach or anything like that. Um, and he just he makes you feel comfortable, and he he learns your plan and what you can like you know when you're kind of not going so hot, what you can always fall back on. He knows what to go to in those situations. So when you're struggling, he can kind of pick you up because he knows what fingers to put down. So yeah, he's and that's that's part of what makes him the best too. So I wonder what like how many mound visits he saves by knowing shit like that. I don't I don't know if he's ever like maybe one time you know, called time and come out and said something to me. I think he just, yeah, like you said, he kind of just has a really good feel to when he f- senses things that are starting to go a little little off, he can get you right back on track without, yeah, having to call time. And right, because, I mean, that you. stuff matters now. You only allowed so many visits mm-hmm. in three batter minimums, and he's essentially, you know, the pitching coach more or less. Um, At least you're not part of that gif of the guy running in and he's shaking his head. <laughs> like, yeah. Why Dude, are we that bringing that guy so in? so funny, bro. <laughs> And that guy was dead ass. T- Have you seen that? Yeah, Jer- oh. I think it's Jared Hughes. It's like known oh. for sprinting in. It yeah. was so funny. Yeah, <laughs> he's just, just like, come on, this oh, guy. it's beautiful. <laughs> um, and then just like even just the the with the pitching coach or other pitchers, like how much are you guys rallying on on information from each other? Uh, a lot, and a lot of that comes with like the advance in the analytics that we have now. I mean. Um, before every single series, we get a printout with like one through nine plus bench plus maybe if, if, even if they have a guy like taxi or something that might come up from the minors, they have him on there too. And uh, it's everything that every single pitcher strength, uh, weakness, you know, everything. Um, so it's very detailed and yeah, there's, there's just a ton of information going around and that comes straight from our pitching coach and our bullpen coach. And our assistant pitching coach too. So there's, there's three different pitching coaches. So I mean, the, the information is I mean, you've got plenty of it. And so yeah, it's you don't. You, there's no shortage of any. Are of there that. Th- are there certain things you like in the information? Because with there being so much information, is there like your go to? Like you want to you want to see this of the hitters and this so much you don't really care about. Not really. I hate to say it, but I don't. I, when they get, bring those papers out, I'm like, I, I mean, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw a fastball and I'm going to throw a changeup, and then maybe I'll mix in a cutter. It's it never changes for anybody, whether their weaknesses match up or they don't. I pretty much stick to the same plan. So, but I know there are guys that like they go they go by that paper quite a bit. So they bring notes out to the bullpen and stuff like that. So, how was it a headset this year? I like it. Um, good. Yeah. Uh, now, can you actually hear him, or what's the what is he? What are the numbers? Yeah, it's, what's he actually pressing and stuff? He's got, I think he's got all our pitches plus location, 
Um, that I, I think that's about it. And then there's so like he, he can call in, up, down, or out. And then there's also a chase option. So if it's like O2, he'll give you change up chase or something. Um, so what is it? He'll plug in, say change up down or mm-hmm. change up in. It'll actually say change up in in JT's voice too. In JT's voice, yeah, they pre-recorded it in JT's voice. Yeah, so it's actually JT talking to you. It's a bit and you can hear down. it pretty good because it's in your hat. Yeah, uh, in the postseason because there's so many people, they got like these little um, like met or uh, plastic um, like tubes, kind of like speaker almost, and you we hole punched holes in our hats, and it comes down like a little earpiece oh, okay. basically, and so you can hear it actually really clearly. I mean, you can't even really see that kind of shit. When no, I didn't. I couldn't even see that the hat thing. Like even just like a tube, mm-hmm. I would have. And now, like, they get close up, right? You can see yeah. close enough to it, and like, you would never have noticed. You can see the bulge. I've noticed it on TV. Just have the you? bulge under the hat. Well, I guess but not oh, the, with the piece. Yeah, but not yeah, the thing. Not hanging the actual down. little antenna. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. How do you In feel JT's about voice. like the the pitch? Clock what if he's like, there? bitch, just fucking throw this pitch? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the first time I did it in spring training, I was I threw some good pitches and I was half expecting like a nice pitch or something. And it never came through. Was, <laughs> oh, could you could they program that too? No, or no? I don't oh, think okay. so. I think it's just straight pitches. That would yeah. be pretty funny. <laughs> that would be funny. What about so you have a pitch clock coming to uh, the big leagues? Where do you where do you stand on that? Have you guys even did well, you, guys did you have it in AAA? spring training too? Right? And, and then spring, they not spring, no AAA. Triple yeah. Just AAA yeah. had it in AAA. Right when I got sent down was like the first day that they implemented that rule and. uh I don't, I don't like it. I don't I don't think anybody really likes it. I don't see the point. Um, I feel like if you're worried about the pace of the game, then you probably shouldn't be sitting in the stands watching the game. Just go home and watch it or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't I don't know. It's going to create a lot less like ability to strategize because it's just so get the ball and go. Like you can't I feel like there's a lot less time to think about, well, you know, I got to this one two count. And he's fouled a couple pitches off, and I did this, that, and the other to set him up. And that, like, you, you don't get to all that time to think about it, especially with the runner on second, because you got to get your sign and go and hope that the runner on second doesn't pick those signs too. So I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's a good idea. But you know, my opinion doesn't really matter. So, well, it it matters. Though. It should though. It, it should it, matter. It, the players it, should. It should matter. It should. Like these. Like you're talking about paying these guys this kind of money, right? Like you what, should want their input. I would. You would think that it would. At least to hear it. Like, I know a lot of people were outspoken about the baseballs. And I know Gamboa, Alec, mentioned to us that in uh, AA, right, Tulsa, mm-hmm. they were going to use three different baseballs throughout the season. And did you read something where Major League Baseball actually used two different baseballs? No. I thought somebody... Well, no, the, oh, because Judge, they were using a different ball for Judge or a stamp or I don't know. I saw something. Like I that. talked to somebody that mentioned, I guess they'd come out and said that they did use different But baseballs. my thing is like, well, is that ball juiced for Judge because they're trying to get him to hit home runs? Or I think the ball's juiced anyways. What do you think? It's, I mean, you're seeing... It's tough. tough to, it's tough to say. I think that... I can't. I cannot say whether or not the ball is juiced, but what I can say is that I have definitely been given balls that feel completely different uh in the same at bat even with a hitter um i'll get some with seams that are high and some with seams that are low i'll get some that where it's like a really good rub i'll get some that are just straight pearls they didn't even see any of the rub um i some there's no consistency for sure uh whether or not they're juiced, that I can't say. But I mean, the ball of Schwarber hit in San Diego. We'll say that ball was not juiced. That ball, yeah, I think that was just pure strength, right there. I'm talking about the one that went oh, like yeah. five hundred plus yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was just strength. <laughs> He's got donkey strength. Yeah. Well, spe- and it, like staying with the Phillies, like if you look at the players that, I mean, you guys are locked up pretty good for like the next five years with. It's a good core built. A, a yeah. lot of dudes that uh, will stick around. Um, you know, just getting into like the season, right? You come, you, you break camp with the team in this last year. Um, you went down for a minute, right? And I then like a month, and then the IL. Uh, yeah, I went, sent down, came back up, got COVID. Is that was, what that was? Because yeah, I was going to ask okay. you, what was the IL stint? Yeah, I got COVID. Um, I was in San Diego. Uh, like had all the family out there and everything. And uh, yeah, I think I woke up on the first game of the, or no, I went out to the bullpen for the first game of the series and I woke up 
before game two of that series, and I just felt like death. Text the trainer, uh, got tested. Yeah, COVID positive, so I had to quarantine down there. How was that? So then, if you were at the neutral site time in twenty twenty, like how different was it this last year versus? I mean, was it as consistent testing stuff like that? Because I, I mean, I know like talking with Marcus, it was insane how much they tested in twenty twenty. Right. Yeah, they were extremely uh, thorough in twenty twenty. It was every other day. Um, spit test for uh, the 2020 season, the entire 2020 season. And then 2021, I think we, it's maybe like the first like three or four um, like months, they did the same thing. And then like the last two months of the season, they they eased off and it wasn't so much uh, testing. And then come 2022 season, last season, there was, unless, unless you feel symptoms, that's the only time you test. And that went for vaccinated and unvaccinated players. So yeah, um, felt symptoms, obviously text and then boom, positive. Yeah. So yeah, so it was COVID then that, so you, they rehabbed you for what, like a week, I think before you went back up. Yeah. I think I, I threw three minor league. Appearances. Did that, I mean, how long did it take you even just to get back? Cause that COVID hits people differently. Like how was it bouncing back from that? It's tough. Um, Cause it seemed like it was a couple of weeks when you well, look at the timeline. Quarantine, you can't do anything. You right. have to stay in the room. Right. Yeah. I didn't even get to play. He's catch. not throwing against the wall. Yeah, I, yeah. the best I could do was, um, I mean, I only had the hotel room to work with, and I did have a couple of baseballs, so I would get on a knee and put pillows uh, at the back of the bed and just throw on a knee to the pillows just to keep my arm moving. And then... Um, Those pillows could take 97. I was I was taking it easy. <laughs> so I didn't want to, like... I don't just want the neighbors the to think up. anything just was going on. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was tough. I just did what I had to do. And then, yeah, at the end of the quarantine, I was still down there stuck in San Diego, but they said that I was allowed to go outside and, like, maintain proper social distancing. So there was a community college, like, maybe a mile and a half walk. So I walked there for, like, three days, and I would throw into a – they had, like, a little L screen that was just out so it wouldn't tear up the ball or anything. So, so they didn't know you were coming? You just showed up? There was nobody there. It was it's just an empty cage. Yeah. Nobody there in April or May? Yeah, well, I don't know. When Do you remember was. the school? It was San Diego City? Junior, junior College San or Diego Community City. College. Or hey, shout out. City, yeah. yeah. Shout out. Little it was, it was on their softball field. Yeah. <laughs> they had a little L screen by their batting cage. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Worked out great. Yeah, that's pretty. So, so like, you're stuck there. Yeah. Like, you don't have any of your shit. Are they sending you meal money or anything? They not actively but i got i got it like um i got reimbursed yeah so it, it yeah they took Kept your receipts and no nah, no receipts i think they just guesstimated <laughs> like went by a flat amount yeah so you're I, in the big you thousand. don't have a thousand bucks you, you don't know. have your 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 stuff right like you just have what because how long was that road trip was that the end of a road trip beginning of a road trip i don't i think it was the end of the road trip i think we had gone somewhere before yeah, yeah we went to uh texas we were in texas playing the rangers and then we went Texas to San Diego. Um, so yeah, I don't like my equipment bag was still in my locker. I just had my clothes and that was it. I didn't have a glove. They brought me like two baseballs and, uh, like a random weighted ball that I, I was like, what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> <Have fun>. <laughs> <laughs> Couple bands, I think. And yeah. Just so you're not myself. a weighted ball thrower. No, you don't like the weighted balls or I, it's not that I don't like them. It's just it's not your thing. No, nah, I just, I never got into that. And yeah. Are um, you into like nothing running? Against it full speed at a net and throwing the ball as hard as you can. I've seen it. Um, You've never you ever done, done it? it? No. You throw how hard? Uh, I'm, I don't know. How hard do you throw? 96-ish on a oh, good day. Oh, shut up. 97. <laughs> Talk out. When it's 96 point above 0. .5, it's 97. Never has he done that. I mean, it does, he's not saying you can't do it. No, I'm, I'm not against I'm it. I'm not saying he's saying he can't do it. I'm just saying <laughs> this guy fucking throws 97 miles an hour and has never once ran full speed and thrown as hard as he can as a net. <laughs> or, I mean, have you ever used weighted balls or there's... Uh, not like how, not with a program, no. Like I've grabbed a couple and just tossed them up against the wall just to kind of feel is that it Is that something? So long toss maybe would be... I, I love to, or I used to love the long toss. And I don't do it so much anymore, but in junior college, I long toss all the time. So what do you do now? Uh, it's grip and rip, dude. Just, the phone uh, the, the rings, rings and he's like, he, he's up. And You're so <laughs> bands, though. You like bands? No, no bands. No bands? No bands. Uh, Let, they, they gave me bands. Uh, we, would need the secret. we need the secret <laughs> to, to what Connor Brogdon does <laughs> well, to maintain I, this arm. Just considering how everybody has their own kind of system in the big, like each team seems to have their own 
things they like to do. How is that with the Phillies? Like, are they pretty adamant about doing certain stuff? Obviously, I mean, if you're not using weighted balls or bands or you're kind of on your own, if, you know, to them for the most part, or do they have like something that you do that they want you to do? Uh, I'm, I kind of just do my own thing. And I think a lot of, for the most part, guys do their own thing. Um, I think they're really good about taking what you like and what works for you and maybe just tweaking one or two things there and just rolling with that. Uh, they're not very, um, they're not going to come in and say, you know, do pivot pickoffs and, and all this, you know, whatever weighted ball stuff or anything like that. Um, yeah. Like in my experience anyways, it's just been very like, yeah, if that's what works for you, go ahead and keep doing it. And unless it's something that where it kind of jumps out to them that I don't think it's healthy or anything, which and I've never had that happen, but um, yeah, there's no, no real set, like, especially with the weighted ball stuff, no real set weighted ball program or real throwing program either. Um, if anything, they'll just make a few suggestions. Like maybe one, one thing with me is I would keep it pretty light when in my, like, uh, when I play catch my throwing program before the game and they would say maybe get a little bit more out of that instead of just kind of going out there and getting loose and but other than that I mean for some it. people that works though I, I think yeah I think some guys just need to chill a little bit but <laughs> it, well, so like even <laughs> like in the off season when you start to as as February comes and you guys get ready to leave like how much are you doing different? Are you just throwing? Like, if you just increase your throwing, the distance you're throwing, all that stuff, is that, or, you know, what are you doing to get ready? Right now I'm just playing light catch every other day. Um, but then starting next month, uh, and this kind of coincides with, the, they actually did send like a more or less like baseline throwing program, like to just kind of go off of. Uh, and they want us throwing, I think, at least flat grounds by like mid-January. So I'll probably be around there around that time but that's just yeah it's just progression just starting like right now i'm just playing light catch and then from here until mid-january we'll just slowly increase see that's good i mean i i don't know what every organization does but i feel like you know they measure everything like everything is tracked right velo spin rate like everything you do i mean if they were finding things that really needed some adjustment i'm sure they would be relaying that stuff to you so you know, it's not like people are just making changes just to make changes or do this just because we want you to do this. If it's not something that works for you, they're not going to make you do it or implement it. Because I get the impression that organizations do that, mm -hmm. whether it's with hitter, maybe more so with hitters. I don't know. Like, that's just what it seems like. And that's what social media makes everything seem like is, you know. Because like you even see the stuff with pitching changes. I know you guys, when it was a game six of the World Series, like, and I think even we mentioned, why is Wheeler coming out of this game? Uh, low pitch count, hadn't done much, game was still close. And for most part, people don't really, they're watching the World Series, but they hadn't seen you play 162 games. It's probably how the game was managed for the most part all season long. Maybe not. I don't I don't know. But I, I thought, well, let him go. He's your horse. This is it. It's do or die. There's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um and you, you often hear people say, oh, the, the analytics this, the analytics that. How much of that stuff plays a role in moves Do you have you noticed? Uh, not super big with the Phillies, but I know that there are organizations where it's like live and die by the Excel spreadsheet. Um, we're not so much there, but I know it does have an influence. And uh, I think that goes for every team. There's at least an influence. Some are, like I said, a little bit more by that Excel spreadsheet than us, but... Um, there's certainly a matchup um, making like they they wanted Alvarado versus Alvarez there like they like that matchup better than Wheeler a righty versus sure Alvarez a lefty um, but yeah I mean the guy throws 100 <laughs> fucking miles yeah. an hour dude yeah. it's yeah it's not like and this like we always say if it worked out we'd be saying something yeah you're saying the opposite you know right great so, move yeah great call great you know exactly. way to get him out of the game exactly. Like I'm not anybody to second guess what a you know a major yeah, league team is doing. Such a tough call, and it just uh, sucked too because Alvarez faced him a lot in the World Series, and Alvarez also had a really good batting average against lefties. 
But I mean, at that point, hadn't hadn't he struggled a little bit in the playoffs, Alvarez? Like he, he wasn't struggled having, a little bit in the World Series, right? Yeah, he but he did face him. I think that was his third time facing him already in six games or something like that. I mean, it happens. Having to cash in twenty twenty with yeah. Tampa and and taking but, I mean, Snell I'm out sitting, early. I'm sitting one oh one too. So I mean, that, I mean, yeah. What <laughs> you kind of have to with yeah, him? I mean, he was going cutter. he was going slider. Or his was it was it a cutter? He or calls it, it like a cutter. A it's a slider. It's yeah. a slider. Yeah, he did. I don't Spanish. know why he calls it. <laughs> it. I mean, he was throwing it off the dish. I mean, he wasn't even trying to put the slider in the strike zone against Alvarez. And so, yeah, I would have. But I mean, bringing up happened. the cash deal in, in Tampa in 2020. That you know, looked and, like and it was straight. Marcus kind of mentioned it. Walden, we had him on, was like, yeah, but people don't see them throughout the year. That's how they manage the bullpen. Every game. The whole season. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, you get where people want that and think that should have happened. But that's just not what they did as a team or organization. All season long, I was just curious. That's all you know because you do. You're right. Like you see it, it's like man. Like I think the Dodgers are one of those teams where they live and die by, like, all the moves they make. It seems maybe analytics play a role. I don't know. I I, I could be way off. I, I'm not sure, but, and maybe you're right. Maybe social media makes it <laughs> things look certain way. Um, and then like during the season this year, you guys have a, a managerial change, and like obviously there's things that happen in the locker room behind closed doors that stay there. So, like, I'm not going to ask you to get into, like, the locker room vibes and stuff like that. But, like, how do you guys, that you personally, like, what is that situation like as, as an everyday guy out of the bullpen? You're, you're seeing some changes. Like, how do you go about your business and things like, or moments like that? This is probably the first time. Or is it, did you have it in minor league ball where you had a new manager change? Or is it the first time you experienced that? Yeah, first first midseason manager change, other than, like, getting promoted or right. something like that. Right. Um, but yeah, um, I, it, it caught me off guard. I didn't ex- exactly see it happen or see it coming. Um, so when I woke up that morning, I was a little shocked by it. Um, and then you kind of just have to go about your business the same. Um, and I had a great relationship with Tomber before that, and still do now. So um, he's been, he was a bench coach there since I got called up in 2020. So so it was familiar. It wasn't like yeah. just some random guy coming in. Right. It was just kind of like okay. This happened. Let's move on. Let's keep doing our thing. Exactly. Yeah. And um, Tomper's same guy as whether he's bench coach or manager, and probably be the same even if he was the president of the United States. So the guy doesn't change. So um, and we heard that from Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter spoke very highly of him. You know, because he was in the Yankees organization, and and uh, that he's kind of been that just that same guy everywhere he's gone. Um, so and then it was probably good to see that extension too that happened. Yeah, um, yeah, that's obviously good that the man or the front office or whatever Dave, I think, is probably the guy who decides on that. I'm not really sure, but yeah, good to see that they have faith in him just as much as we all have faith in him. Like I know there's not one guy in that clubhouse that doesn't want to play for him. So yeah, happy to have him for the next two years. Hopefully, I'm still here for two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How, what is that clubhouse like? There's some characters on this roster. And uh, yeah, I was just I was just curious, like, what is that? What is the group like in there? Because you seem like you're the one in the corner that just watches everything. That's a pretty good, pretty good <laughs> uh, assessment. Yeah, no, nah, it's there's a lot of um, energy uh, that goes around for sure. Like uh, Mayton, Bohm, Marsh, like they're the kind of I say younger guys just because they're a little bit younger than me. But like those younger guys, they're very, very high energy, and then. Last year you had guys like David Robertson who's been in the league for like 15 years and he's kind of kind of like me like just you know wants to sit in his chair and just you know stay away from me maybe play a game of ping pong or two or something um and then yeah the, there's the dudes like Bryce Harper like you know see him seeing him around the clubhouse every single day is still you know pretty crazy um to call that guy my teammate you know so I, it's it's definitely a pretty pretty good mix in there for sure but like you said i kind of just sit sit in my chair and just stay out everyone's way and kind of just watch <laughs> have you have you gotten any autographs from any of the players in the locker room or are uh, you kind of like you don't want to be that guy by default because when we went to the world series everybody gets a box of balls that is signed by everybody on the team um so i guess yeah that's that it I did. but i i'm not when when andrew mccutcheon uh, I kind of had a feeling that we were not going to pick up his option mm-hmm. after the 21, I think. Yeah. So at the, in the last series, last year, I asked him for his autograph just because he's, he was really one of my favorite players growing up. I watched him play for the pirates probably since his rookie year all the way through. And then 
got to be his teammate. So yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't pass up on that opportunity. But other than that, I haven't asked for anybody. So you got a box of autographed baseballs. Everybody just autograph one. So it's a, a one autograph on each. Or? No, so it's it's the whole team on every ball. Okay. Yeah. And you have a box of those? Where's this? I, I haven't gotten the box yet. Okay, but it should be coming. I think it has to get like probably authenticated and all that stuff. So I know I called him and told him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's so. Speaking of ping pong, though, you're good at ping. Are you good at ping pong? I don't really play. No? No, no, what? No, it's in the clubhouse, but I don't really play. No. You guys got a gaming system in there? Oh, you got to have a gaming. No. What? No. 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 No games. It's no. not. Co- it's not a college football locker room atmosphere. You see that yeah. in a lot of college There's football. Th- in AAA, we had a bunch of games, uh, but just not in the big leagues. I don't know. Maybe it's not a good look. I don't know. What's it like? How much do you get to see some of these guys work? Like how much? Like talking about a guy like Bryce Harper, or, yeah. you know, even Reese uh, Segura. Um, I mean Segura, his offseason hitting workouts are ridiculous with Nelson Cruz. I love watching him. He seems like he's a professional. Yeah, you know, guys like JT and Castellanos, like. Just how much time do you observe them just work? Uh, well, I mean, he's a pitcher. Him, he's yeah, a pitcher. No, I know. I see him every day, um, and you you're around him all the time too. Like you run into each other in the weight room and stuff like that all the time. So um, it's 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 funny because like some guys just they don't have to work. They're just good. I mean, I'm not going to name names or anything, but some guys don't have to go in the weight room as much, and then there are guys that do grind really hard like you were mentioning Segi's uh, off-season workouts like I know that guy gets after it so yeah it's just kind of to each their own type deal what I'm just picturing him working out he's yeah uh yeah <laughs> are you more on the treadmill running no, what is your routine what's my because you see it seems like like it's just it's been like not easy because it's not easy. I'm trying to put this in a like you just go do your thing and like you. He's it just happens. he's not trying not to name names. He's one of those guys that doesn't have to <laughs> work out work out so much. Okay. Or, okay. No, I mean i I would never say I don't have to. I I go in there and I work out and I do what is expected of me. So do they have? <laughs> does your strength and conditioning? Do they have things they want you guys to do? More or less, because yeah. I know in the minors they do. Yeah, it's, I would say it's definitely more regiment in the regimented, however you say that, in the uh, minors. Yeah. You can get a little, get away with a little bit more in the majors, especially if you're, if things are going good, they'll give you a little bit more leeway. But um, at the same time, like I still do try to get in there and do the things that I need to do. Yeah. Try not to take too much advantage. Are you a big ice guy, heat guy? What's your arm care? Um, or you just got a freaking rubber band arm? <laughs> Yeah, just light catch that the coaches come and tell me I need to take a little bit more serious. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Must be nice. I know. I love it. Uh, getting into so getting into this run, right? One, uh, you guys had to do some work just late in the season to get where you got. Uh, the National League was fun race to watch towards the end down the stretch. I think you guys clinched your spot the final week. Do you remember? Yeah, it was it was definitely late. Like one of the or no, we we clinched um, in the first game of Houston, which was the last series of the year. So it was like third to last game. Yeah, it was. That's yeah. what I thought. It was that final week. Um, what was it? Just what was it like? Like what was the atmosphere like within the team? And just like what's going on? Like are you guys just? It's I mean, playing that many games, and we tell people, even as coaches, like it's the cliche of game at a time. When you guys play as many games as you do every single day, there's really no other way to go about it. I would, I would say. What What is it like when you're trying to chase the wild card spot? Uh, I mean, it was a slightly different kind of atmosphere, I guess, for us because we were stuck on a road trip that whole time, and we knew that uh, we weren't like even if we went to playoffs, we weren't going to get to go home and for like. I think it was like two and a half weeks or something. It was like a 21 day road trip or something. It's crazy. Um, so we basically just kind of took that as like, you know, this, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a road grind. We're going to go to like four different cities and not to say, take it one game at a time, but more or less, that is kind of what it turned into. It's like proof in the Cardinals game. Um, the first game of the wild card, I think it was a two nothing in the eighth inning. And next thing you know, you guys are, Six two, yeah, and 
I think, yeah, just from that moment forward, it really did become a game by game type deal because I, I mean, when we were down two nothing in the eighth, I know I wasn't the only one kind of thinking like, dang, you know, did we really come all this way to, you know, basically, you know, go to and barbecue type deal. So <laughs> it's almost like um, you, you welcome the 21 day road. Like we didn't doubt, let's not go home. Yeah. yeah it, well, we, plus it seemed like you were playing playoff games anyways to get to the playoffs. Yeah. Like every game to he, win, to get in Houston was right before the playoffs. So you have like, I mean, they won the world series. So obviously the best team in baseball, uh, to just to get to the playoffs. Um, so yeah, it definitely, it definitely did become something that like we kind of embraced, like this is going to be a road, like, I don't know, road warrior type mindset. You know, we're, we're going to do this for, I think it was, I think it was like three weeks or 24 days or 21 days or something. It was crazy. It was a long time, but it, it boded well for us. So, and it's not like, Oh, we get through the wild card round. You go face Atlanta in Atlanta, the defending world champs, uh, and on the road again to start. Um, Played them all year, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's no secrets on either side. Like, everybody knows what everybody's Did you got. guys feel, I mean, obviously go in there and, what, seven runs? No home runs in game one, but seven runs scored. Mm-hmm. Um, was that like, it's just, yeah, this is, this is, the wild card may be a different vibe, but once you get to Atlanta, is that, that's how you guys kind of, this is a, a divisional type You're game. Hot. Right. You're playing hot. You're at the, the right time. Like nothing changes, right? The the mind, like it, it's not necessarily the playoffs. I guess is how you're you put not not putting pressure on yourself. Yeah, I mean, try not to try. Yeah, I was gonna say try not to put pressure. There's there is so much pressure. Um, in Atlanta is, I I mean, in my experience, I think it's for sure the toughest place to pitch. Um, I don't know about just playing in, but it it's got to be like one of the toughest places to play in as a road team. Um. And so, yeah, to go in there, and I think I don't. What we split, right? We went one and one. I'm pretty yeah, sure in, in Atlanta, yes. Yeah. So to to at least just get one there, that was huge for us. And I, uh, John Middleton, the owner, came in and after that game, and he goes, "That's all we needed. Just don't come back." And so when we went home, we knew we just went to. We don't have to come back here. I mean, I'm. Sh- it sounds it sounds loud. Uh, Philly sounds louder. Yes. Like you, Atlanta sounds like it, you might be right. It's probably think, one of the toughest places get, to pitch. Didn't but. it cause an earthquake or something? Oh, it did, yeah, it showed up on like the seismograph. Yeah, during two of the home runs. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, it's it's insanely loud. Like Philly um, might be a tougher for an opponent. Yeah, well, let's just hope I stay on the Phillies. Never have to pitch there as a road player. How are those fans? Uh, I mean, how was that atmosphere? That atmosphere was insane. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, did it get like more and more as, as you guys like Atlanta coming to town one that's big because like you said that's a divisional opponent like you've seen him a shit ton of times I'm sure the hatred for Atlanta is it runs deep you for, know what for I mean? the fan base for sure so to, to to get that series done and then you know you, you guys face uh, San Diego and I'm sure even at that you know and then the World Series did it continue to elevate or I mean uh, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say that, no, because, like, they were just so constantly, like, electric the whole time. That's how they are. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, yeah, like, you, I'm like the first game of the, the first home game against, I think it was Atlanta, uh, the first home playoff game, that is. Uh, I remember thinking, this is, like, the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. When I walked out to the bullpen before the game started, I was looking around, and I just, like, I couldn't believe it. It's every, not one empty seat, every, like, towels going crazy. They now, kept even it though up it's one home, do you have do you get nervous, even though it's home and you know they're with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get nervous. I mean, I know it's the every playoffs game, no the, every <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I think that's normal though. What is your process to kind of combat that? Because, like I said, in the playoffs, <laughs> no. I mean, in the postseason, here I got the numbers here. In the postseason this year, you pitched eight and two thirds inning, uh, two zero eight ERA with thirteen Ks. Uh, World Series, four innings pitched, no earned runs, seven Ks, no walks. So while you can say you get nervous every single time, what is it that brings you back down? Because those are legit numbers. Um, just uh, do you have the cle- it, do you have it, a clear the mechanism like, moment? Yeah, is that is that a real thing? <laughs> Dude, I'm sure everybody wants to know that. I'm sure guys have their different shit, but honestly, like I don't, I don't have a really good answer. I think I just once. 
I cross from the gates of the bullpen to the field, something else, like a flow state kind of deal kind of takes over. And um, maybe it is like a subconscious clearing the mechanism. I don't have like a protocol or anything that I go through to do that. I think it just kind of happens. And I, I find myself walking off the mound just as like, like from the time I go from the bullpen to the time I'm walking off the mound, it happens like that quick. And it, I don't know, like I just, so by the time you get there to start your warm up pitches, you're, you're good. It's pretty much. Yeah. Some, sometimes, um, depending on the situation, like, so if I come in and like, I think one time I came in against the Dodgers with like bases loaded and in a big moment or something, two outs. And I, I don't know, I had to get it or, or maybe it was the Cubs. I don't, I don't remember. It was, it was a big moment. And I came in and like, it took me like one or two pitches. I remember like feeling pretty nervous while I was pitching, but if it's just like a standard, just set inning where I come into a clean inning. Yeah. I think by the time I finish my warm ups, I've kind of, I'm kind of just, yeah, relaxed more or less. And I'm sure like we talked about having a guy like JT back there, just knowing whatever he puts down, I'm freaking throwing. And he knows me just as much as I know myself. It, it probably takes a lot of pressure off as well. For sure. You can always trust what he's going to put down. And also at the same time, like if you really feel convicted and going against what he's going to put down, uh, there's no hard feelings there. Like he's not going to come up to you and be like, you know, why'd you shake to that or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. Other than to maybe help use it going forward. Like, you know, ask why, Hey, you know, and maybe next time, like, Hey, I know what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. You bring that up. He's asked me that before. Like, Hey, why did you shake to this? And I said, I just felt better about going to this. And it, it was in a situation where it worked out and I'm sure, yeah, he did, you know, put that in his back pocket and come back to it later because, and, and to, yeah, actually I know, I know for a fact he did because it was, he stopped calling fastballs into lefties after I stopped <laughs> shaking every single time he called fastball into lefties. So, yeah. Is that just a feel thing though? Like it, at that time, I mean, I'm sure you, you go into lefties when, in other situations, like the just times, like I just I can't get it in there today. Yeah, they're yeah, mostly a feel thing. I would say like, just probably eighty to ninety percent of the time, I just don't feel great about yanking a fastball across the zone because I I set up on the third base side of the rubber, so I have to go all the way across to get that pitch over there. And if you don't get it there, exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's middle middle. Yeah, so I would rather just work outer corner and then aim middle with a cutter and let it run in type deal. You know, the other, and I, the other cool thing uh, is, is uh, that divisional series, you know, you got to face the Braves and, and Dylan Lee, another local product got in. I think you guys pitched against each other in two games. Yeah. Uh, we did it all year too. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout the regular. Season. So how, how cool is that? It's just like, you guys get to chat about it at all, or do you guys get to converse a little bit at, at all during the series or throughout the year? Yeah. Not, we didn't really like catch up or anything during the year, but, um, it was always pretty great. Like he came in and pitched against us a ton. And it's funny because like Bryce Harper and JT and these like top hitters on our team are in our clubhouse. Like this Dylan Lee guy, like how are we going to hit this guy? And it's, it's just so funny. Like knowing, you know, I played against this guy when he was at COS and I was at Fresno city. city yeah. Dinuba guy, Madeira Ranches guy. So it is, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy that he's given these, he's given Bryce Harper fits, you know? Um, and he, he dominated us all year he had another yeah had another good season even a good uh run in the postseason and that's pretty sick dude you two small town you know small school guys or or quote unquote small, i mean liberty's pretty small i don't know how big dinuba is but it's just you know it's not the the places everybody thinks uh to see guys in the big leagues our big leagues having success and playing for world series and you know they won it last year that was pretty awesome to see and, and we got to go to houston uh, the other atmosphere I wanted to talk about though was San Diego. I got to go to a game there over the summer and that place is in like one of the coolest stadiums I've been to. What was that atmosphere like considering what they had just come off of beating the Dodgers? Beating the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, I would not say it's as tough as Atlanta, but the atmosphere was, was pretty, pretty crazy, very electric. Um, but I mean, the kind of goes for every place you play. Um, I think just for me, like, I, it, it's it's even cooler for me because that's like almost even though it's not home it feels like home because you don't get to go to California a whole lot so uh, for me it was even just that much more special and electric but yeah they, I mean they, every single place we played I think the postseason was packed out and crazy how is Houston versus all of like all of it out of the St Louis to Atlanta 
obviously your guys' spot to San Diego and then to Houston. Like, what do you think was hands down if you had to put, well, maybe we subtract Philly. Because to me, Philly sounded like the craziest environment. For yeah. sure. But on the road, what was the maybe the loudest environment you guys played? The loudest was absolutely Houston. I'm, that's the loudest I've ever heard in any stadium ever. I mean, it was louder than and Philly. They probably, did it was, they have it closed? The, the dome. Yeah, oh, yeah, the dome. So, it was, yeah, it's not for lack of trying on Philly's part. You know, they just don't have the acoustics that Houston has there. <laughs> yeah, so no, I, I think it was closed when we went last yeah, year, too. Yeah, it, it was gets, loud. It's definitely loud. Um, you know, like, when you guys – finish that world series like what is obviously everybody's upset but it, it is the mindset like okay we got a little a taste you're seeing what's happening in the off season moves you know how how excited are you to get back to spring training now that was actually one of the things that i noticed about just like speaking from a personal standpoint is in years past, especially in the minors, you kind of when you're getting towards the end of the year, you're like, man, I can't wait for that off season. I can't wait to just chill, play golf, play video games, whatever. Um, I remember like the first like three or four days of the off season, I was like, man, like I just want to go to the field. I just want to play catch, or throw a pen, or something. And even still, like I'm just, it, it just makes you like hungrier to get back to, especially now that we've added Trey Turner and Strom and Taiwan, and probably gonna who knows, maybe even add a piece or more. Um, so. It just, yeah, makes you want to get back because we got right there, you know, just two wins away. So we know what we're capable of. There's a good chance you'll be back there again. You know, I mean, they put the pieces together. You guys had the pieces and now adding, you know, probably the best shortstop in the in the league. Um, I mean, he's – I think he's – He's the most underrated well, shortstop. I mean, now he's a $300 million oh, yeah. player. <laughs> no, so it's hard to say that, but, I mean, I say that – looking at how they talk about a guy like like Cray is a great player. Um, Xander Bogarts is a great player. Uh, I think that was an odd deal with San Diego, 11 years. Yeah, he's 30. For But um, he's been consistent. I just, I, consistent. yeah, I was. He's been like an MVP candidate that never gets considered well, MVP. Well, yeah, candidate. they never consider him an MVP. I just think that's kind of crazy. Because he hits over 300. He hits 25-plus homers and drives in almost 100, scores 100. Has the cleanest slide in the game. Well, I don't know. Trey Turner's got a pretty good slide. Is that how you're yeah, talking Trey about? Turner. You're talking about oh, Trey Turner. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was talking oh, about Trey's they, numbers. I thought you were talking about Xander Bogart. No, no, no. I was, no, like, no. I was talking about Trey's numbers and, oh. and the MVP thing. Gosh. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because uh, Bogart's pretty similar. I know. Stat, underrated, too. Stat too. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. he hit like 307 last year with 25 plus. It's like the guy too, hits so. 300 every year. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's And I think Turner's like a 20, 20 bombs, 20 bags. Like he's going to play defense. I don't know. I love the guy. I think that now is, you got Stout and Segura to maybe platoon at second. Well, Segura, are they? I don't know Segi, if they, they didn't pick up. Yeah, his, they didn't pick oh, his they option. Didn't, no. Yeah. So then you got Stout going probably to second. He, yeah, I, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And is is Reese still? He's got. Does he still have time? Or is he's, he? This is last year. Last year. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I know he he kind of flipped too from third. He played a little first base during the postseason and. Uh, yeah, no, Reese is, bom but bom Bummer will go over and play a little bit of first year okay. in there, yeah. but Reese, Reese played is first. strictly He first, played left yeah. field a couple of years ago. I think when he got called up, he was technically an outfielder. Was um, it? I thought he, for some reason, I thought he played some third base for some reason. I don't know why. No, bom Bomb was the only one that's done both mm -hmm. at third and first. And then you had that, well, he had some controversy with his, uh, his glove. No, no, uh -huh. no, no. Uh, oh, I hated, okay. The bat slam <laughs> from Hoskins, like. Some people because the home run bats, slam? yeah, during the postseason. Oh, it's the postseason. I was going to talk about the interviews in the middle of the game, like how, how uh, much Ken Rosenthal suck? in the in yeah. The <laughs> how did the players have anything to say like afterwards, like how terrible they were? You don't have to name names. No, I mean, I think from I like, mean, you just got done hitting a home run, and now yeah, this guy's trying to freaking talk to you. And like, day, no, day my team's one, playing. Day one, we were like, what is going on here? And like, does MLB say you kind of you have? To I, do I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody. Like from MLB or anything said like you know this is good. this got to happen but I think guys are probably like, you know what are we gonna do you know they're coming up and putting a mic in our face to yeah. Deal. so yeah it was went along with this pretty as, crazy as a person watching it was ridiculous yeah I, I don't, was, I don't was, know. even the managers right like they do the managers and during the I'm like hey uh, he's got a job to, this is only the right this is what they played all season for is to get mm -hmm. here yeah yeah you're taking away from 
his time to focus on the game. Well, and they so like we can answer I, some questions. I think Jeff Fry was, or there was some people. Well, they asked Bomb about, oh, we saw Bryce Harper come over and tell you something. Yeah, did what he did he say to you? Up? It's like you asked him four times. Is he really going to tell you what they tipped off or what? Uh, you know what I mean? And then he got interviewed after the game, the same thing. Well, that's what it's I'm like, saying. Shut they the get, fuck up. They answer. They ask the same question after the game. Just then. Just scrap that. Let's just ask those questions after the game's over. Yeah. By the way, what did Bryce Harper say? No, you can't say I'm it. just <laughs> kidding, bro. Tell us off air. Tell us off air. It's a joke. Um, I know he saw something. Chad, you, you, I don't know. Were you going to ask him about like players that he's faced? I, I, we always oh, yeah. go into like the toughest. Because we did ask that the first time you did the podcast about. Being at spring training. Yeah, but there were some interesting guys that you'd face at that point. But now kind of a little more established in the in the big leagues like. This and having to face some, well, dude, that dudes. I mean, yeah, like, I'm sorry, the NL East this year was probably the yeah the dominant league. I mean, the AL East is always pretty good, but between the Mets and you guys and the Braves, it was, and it's not stopping. It's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no stack division for sure. I, when you when you mentioned like toughest hitter that at least for me, like every time Austin Riley from the Braves gets in the box. That is, it's never comfortable. I know I have to be on on the top of my game because I just the dude's just a really good hitter and sees it really well out of my hand. So that like as far as toughest hitters, I gotta say Austin Riley. So does that kind of like when you see a guy like that and then you realize how young he is? Yeah, is it not insane? Yeah, it's yeah. No. Is he twenty five? Well, so yeah, I think last year we were at the World Series watching him take BP, and somebody's like, "Yeah, he's only twenty four. I'm like. What? Yeah. No. Like, so then I'm assuming. Stetson Bennett's 25. He's the quarterback at Georgia. <laughs> He's going to win a Heisman. Uh, so then I'm sure you're glad Freddie Freeman was probably. Well, no, lefty. You probably yeah. threw him pretty good. But he's probably just a really Well, good how hitter. often did you face him anyways? Face him. I th- I've seen him, I think, like a handful of times. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's not a comfortable at bat. Uh, but I know yeah, l- having a lefty in there certainly makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. Come on. I mean, but he's got the, <laughs> one of the nastiest changeups in the game. I would rather see lefties and righties if I was him. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I love facing lefties. Is there any? Is there an easy matchup in the big leagues though? No. Like we're talking like who's the you know? Yes, it, there is an easy matchup. The whole league batted like two thirty. As on average, yeah, eh. it was like two thirty two. It was I like two thirty two as a whole entire major league baseball. Gallo might be, I guess, <laughs> considered one of the easier matchups. Dude, he put out of something about how he had no protection in New York, and that's kind of well. Weird. That's another thing that's going to change is the shifts, right? Yep. What do you think about that? Um, I'm a bad guy to ask because I, it just seems like every time you they shift, care, huh? we get burned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, at the same time, like yeah, just make them swing and miss, right? Like, <laughs> isn't that the goal, anyways? So, uh, if I locate this where I need it, it doesn't matter. Right, um, it's gonna be interesting. I, 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 I'm just excited to kind of see what the numbers say. You know, like is were the shifts helping or were they not? I'm yeah. kind of curious to see because personally, like I said, I, it just seems like every time, and not even when I'm pitching, when everybody else on my team's pitching, they just always seem to be in the wrong spot. Maybe you just notice those those ones stick out more than the ones where the shift works. It's yeah. actually probably what it is, but yeah. Yeah, right. the other guy was was it Ranger who just felt like seemed, like a rubber arm kind of guy, like yeah, he's um, good in any situation. I think he closed the game to get us to the World Series, and he can start and yeah, and he can hit too. I saw him hit last year before they implemented the DH, so yeah, he's just good at everything. Do you sneak any hacks in? No. Have you ever snuck any hacks in? Never in the big leagues. No. I, the last time I hit was in Double A. We got to sneak in a hack. Why? Just because. Why not? Because he just wants hurt. to go throw Ched and <laughs> strike hurt people myself. Up. Yeah, or that. <laughs> the one thing that hurts him. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would. Yeah, I That's guess tough that to would explain. Be, yeah, that. Well, what happened? Didn't Scherzer get like a bunt when he's trying to work? Oh, he his nose. In the, yeah, right in the face. <laughs> That's okay. So talking about autographs in the clubhouse. Have you ever had to send them anything over to another team? I've never done that. No. Dude, come on, bro. Get nervous. No. Yeah. You don't want to be that you no. don't want to be that guy. No, you yeah, are exactly. a big leaguer now. You but have You can't say that cuz we do the same thing with this. They're like we have 
Like we didn't, we don't want to bug you guys, right? No, like, no. So like during, this, but I mean, because I get asked, like, they're in the clubhouse. Jordan they're Lupo in the clubhouse again. at like one o'clock for a seven o'clock I game. I know they have so much downtime. So what you're saying we should start bugging them more? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying that. And now, if I was a big leaguer, <laughs> yes, I would bug them more. I'd be like, bro, I know you just took BP. And you're, <laughs> you're sitting for two and a half hours. You can fucking autograph me a ball or a bat. <laughs> like, because there's some dude. Like, I mean. Especially in the NL East, like you, yeah, that's you, the division where I'd be. You have Scherzer, Degrom that you face, you know the now Verlander, you know Max Fried and those guys, and you know probably some you being a relief pitcher, probably some relief pitchers that you look up to or you know watch more. You know, have you ever thought about it? Uh, yeah, I've thought about it a lot. Um, thought about it with Pujols, with Yachty, um, guys like who I knew were going to retire, um, who I grew up watching. Um, and then it just turns into like, yeah, like kind of like you said, I don't want, I don't want to bother them. Yeah. You know, they're going to, if, if the, but even during BP, when you guys cross paths, do you ever think of just like, Hey, I don't want to bother you, but I just want to. Yeah. But I know if I like walk up to them, they're just going to like, especially like, like who are you? Exactly. Who is this guy? You know, it's well, like, then you have the your numbers manager against against I'm the guy that's probably going to sit your ass <laughs> down tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just yeah, don't want to bother them. Do you regret yeah. it though? Maybe not. Now that they're gone, no, no, you're just like whatever. No. I mean, even your roster, I just, I would be, I would have everybody on your team. Harper, dude, let me get some of those green shoes. I know you got like twenty pairs in there, <laughs> the ones with the fuzzies on them. He does get some fancy shoes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's got no shortage of those headband. He seems like since he's had a family, he's kind of been. I think he gets a bad rap just for how cocky he was coming up, but I. I've always liked him. I've but was he cocky or was that like just people putting an expectation on him? Like this, oh, this kid was. But good. I mean, he also really hit young. thirty-one homers in junior college as a high school senior with a wood bat. With a wood bat. So I mean, he had every right to be cocky. But I think since you know he had his run-ins at the Nationals and stuff. But I think he's calmed down, and now that he's as a family and been married, I mean, he seems like a great guy. I think. I mean, he seems like he wants to win. You know, he wants to do what's right for the team. He'll he'll get an extra base. He'll you know, he'll do other stuff. He doesn't seem like your typical superstar that might not want to do extra or be a good team guy. Um, I know you're not going to say anything bad, but I I've, I like him. Well, I know. Well, again, going back to Walden brought up a really good story about him on here just of, of early work. And so he does. He does. He seem, works. Yeah, he seems like that guy. Um and he was huge for you guys, like down the stretch there towards mm -hmm. the end, like even during uh, was it the uh, NLCS, San Diego hit that one late home run. That That's the whole reason we went to the World Series, yeah. that home run. So, yeah, um, there's no questioning that guy's work ethic ever. Like you said, he'll take an extra bag at any time, like busting it out of the box every single time um, and just want wants to win more than anything. That's all he cares about is winning. So, um, I'm sure he's got a chip, too, since he left Nationals. They win the next year. Yeah. You know. He wants to win one so bad. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's probably, yeah, getting that close this last year is probably just going to motivate him and all of us that much more. So um, so you can say the Phillies are going to be scary in 2023. I, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Especially all these pieces that we're picking up, it's going to be, it's going to be, a, I, would, I mean, have to say better than last year for sure, I think. Yeah. So. Well, there's only one thing better than last year, <laughs> winning the fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, how was that? What is what is that party like? I mean, you, the cameras show you so much. How long does that party after the uh, NLCS go? For some guys, I don't know. <laughs> are you are you in your locker just drinking beer, smashing beers by yourself, or are you jumping around? No jumping for me. Uh, kind of stand on the hurt. sidelines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take some champagne to the eye or something. But uh, yeah, I just watch for the most part. Uh, I'll do the initial like spray down of Tomper and then just try and stay out of the way. I don't want to get hurt or <laughs> it gets pretty crazy. And there's a lot of jumping around, a lot of objects flying left and right. Um, and then, yeah, it usually goes from the clubhouse somewhere else after that. And that's about when I, uh, that's you, when you, you go it. back and get on the games. <laughs> no, not the games. Go to bed. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I was, I think I was going to ask, like how often, like, do you get to take, what do you take with you? Like, do you guys get to take any of that shit on the road or when you have a, when you say you got a potentially 21 day or like you have a 10, 11 day road trip, is that like you guys bringing any of that stuff? Yeah. The guys who like to play video games will bring their stuff on the road. Um, guys with time, especially with pitchers, uh, 
starters and stuff, they'll take their golf clubs and go play golf if they're not going to be pitching anytime soon. So, um, yeah, it's you try to make the most of your downtime because uh, you get just a little bit more, it seems like, on the road because you don't have to go in quite as early most days as you would at home. Um, and it's always cool to explore, like, all the new – it's for a young guy anyways, explore all the new cities and stuff that you've never really seen. So – what uh, that's you huh you're out walking around checking oh, yeah, out the city i'm big big explorer not really no <laughs> no no no, no? Nah. you're kind of just in your room hanging out for the most part yeah yeah i just yeah i'll try and wake new, up like new york seems like a scary city to go walk around in a lot of people yeah, yeah. um and we stay like where do we stay i think it's like right in the middle of like manhattan or something so it's um it's busy. It's right across from the like St. Patrick St. Patrick's Cathedral. I don't know if you guys know where that's yeah, at, but yeah. it's it's like definitely in a pretty busy spot of New York. So it's just to go get your morning Starbucks. It's you're <laughs> going through a swarm of people and stuff. And I'm from the Rancho, so I'm not used <laughs> to that. <so. laughs> what was it like going through a the, your full like a full season fans in through the playoffs? Like, did you ever I look had, back it, on it now? Yeah, well, like you, you know. Was there a time where you're like, man, like, for people that, obviously, they all know it's a grind, right? It's a long season. What did you feel like at the end of the season? And did, the, like, the playoffs, did you have to find another gear? Or was the adrenaline just the, the fans? Like, how much of that really helps <coughs> get through that stuff? Yeah, I think uh, in a normal season, no postseason, I would have been pretty, like, my body would have been ready to kind of check out come uh, what is it like October or whatever? Um, but yeah, having all the fans, all the adrenaline stuff, I, I, did, I did, it wasn't even necessary to try and find another gear. I just was able to f- kind of use that as fuel. And I never really felt, um, I never really got to enter that, like, oh, I'm supposed to be in the off season mode where I start to feel sore and all that. Like, it just, it just felt like it was still the season to me. And then that's kind of carried over. Like I said, like the first three or four days of the off season, I was like, man, I, you know, I want to go throw a pen or something. I'm not ready for the off season. So it, that, yeah, that the atmosphere with the fans and all that, just, it helps a lot for sure. What about like the doubters? Like people kind of at that world series, like, Oh, we've got a third place yeah. division team playing. And it's like, well, you won 80 plus games uh, in one of the best divisions in baseball. Uh, and not only that, you had to beat St. Louis, really good teams to Braves get there. And like Padres, which were all uh, good. Whether you want to say, oh, they're just they're the hot team, right? Well, yeah, yeah, that's normally who wins at the that, end of the year. Well, and that right, that's what everybody. Let's get hot. I don't want to be the best team in the first ten games. Let's be the best in the last ten games. Yeah. Um, you know, did that? Does any of that shit ever get to you guys? Like, do you guys when you hear the outside noise, or is it just outside noise and it's it's done, gone? Uh, it doesn't like get to us, but there we would joke all year. Um, seemed like you know every time we lose two of three in a series and. Or, or something, or, like, lose five of seven on a road trip or something, somebody would say something, oh, you know, season's over. You know, that's it. Pack it in, guys. It's all over. We can't go to playoffs now. But it's, you know, joking. Obviously, obviously yeah. And it, it became a pretty constant joke throughout the year, and it almost, yeah, kind of, like, be, still at the very end, we were joking. Like, while we were in playoffs, we were joking about it. Like, remember when we were saying, you know, it's over, season's over, and here we are, you know, playing in San Diego. It. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How many guys? I'm try, I was trying to like Schwarber's one. I think I'm sure Robertson was one as well. How many guys had playoff experience that also? Because it seemed like you guys weren't phased by the playoffs at all. Like it'd been there, right? Whereas most teams say, "Oh, they got some experience in the postseason now." You know, watch what they do going forward. But it didn't seem like that. And I, I'm trying to think of how many guys, you know, veterans in the clubhouse that had some playoff experience that kind of helped the locker room a little bit get through this each well, series. Harper. Yeah, Harper was another guy. I know this was Segura's first. Yeah, and he had he 10 excited. years in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's cool if, like have, when he's your teammate like you want you want to get to the playoffs that much more for a guy like that cuz uh, since 2020 he's been saying like you know I've been here for 8 years and 2021 has I've been here for 9 years and I still haven't played in the playoffs and so to get to the playoffs for you know him it's and he had that's, a great that's cool. great you know Wild card and the, the he had yeah. some big two big strike hits, huge two hits. strike. I hits. mean, yeah. actual hits. Like when we talk about you know, fuck the analytics. He's going the other way. You know, he was a he's a hitter. Yeah, no doubt about that. Great hitter, clutch hitter. Yeah, I'm excited. I want to know because the Phillies have really good uniforms. What's your favorite one? 
Because uh, you do have some of the sickest old school unis. I like the old creams that we're, we're not going to use them anymore. But the we wear them on day games. Uh, we wore them on day games this last season. Is it the cream with the royal and royal and red stri- two, the stripe? Yeah. Okay, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Those are my With the blue hat and the red bill? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're getting rid of those, I guess, this year. Really? Or next year. Yeah. Sad. I don't know what we're replacing them with, if anything. Well, What's yours? Have to sneak us that jersey. <laughs> What's yours? I like the baby blues or the old pinstripe with the the dark maroon. They don't have that one. Oh, that with one the there? with the classic. Yeah, P. the classic P. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I yeah, like, like the P. But Rose I do like days. the baby. I do like. The I like baby the blues blue. too. The baby blues. Yeah, they're good. nice. They just don't fit good. That's why I kind of don't like them. If they fit a little bit better, at least the top pants fit good, but the top is very is baggy. It, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they go for that like kind of older style. Yeah, but look. you're in the big leagues, bro. You you know they can do your stuff the way you want them. I I know, and, and I, like so, all my other jerseys they fit great, and then that one it's they're like, like dude, you're 180 pounds, you're six <laughs> six, like. Gain some weight. Is it a new piece every every New Jersey? Yeah, or do they I mean how many I think it's how many get, unis you go through? You get two of each color for every year. Um and then anything after that is like they gotta order it in. Um so I remember like one time I wanted to give one away. Uh and it w- it wasn't really an issue. I just had to basically wait to give that jersey away until the other okay. one had been ordered in so that just in case like there was a brawl or something where like my jersey got <laughs> tore off i wouldn't be screwed so yeah how many of those you guys get into i i think we we had one last year i think um i don't remember who it was with but uh, it was i've only been a part of one and i had to run all the way from the center field bullpen <laughs> out to the out to the home plate and right when i got to home plate it was all over so was, just walk right back you got to do it though yeah you, you have to leave yeah and if all, you yeah. don't leave Cause you probably don't. You're I, you're the guy that's just hanging out. I just want to watch this <laughs> shit, man. I don't. You have to leave. It's it's part of the game. Uh, if you don't leave, you get a lot of shit. Before we finish this, do you know that your mom single handedly wrecked the no the no hitter? Do you know this? Uh, she tweeted out yeah. to the world. It was beautiful because it instantly. Not only did it wreck the no-hitter, I think you guys did a couple bombs, took the lead. It was the first game, right? You guys were down like 5 nothing, and all of a sudden roaring back. And it, it wasn't Verlander's, right? I think it was. Was it Verlander? Yeah, I think it was game one of the World Series. And it was, it was and listen, don't hold it against Chad. What? He picked, hold me he, against what? He picked the Astros, okay? I didn't, okay? Uh, but no, it, <laughs> Chad's like, yeah, his mom broke up the world. <laughs> <laughs> no hitter in the World Series. So shout out. Uh, and one, uh, the, your parents are very, like, great big supporters of ours. And uh, we definitely appreciate that. But I didn't know if you knew that. Did you know that? Uh, I know that anytime there is a no hitter going on, she will head to the social medias. <laughs> Unless it's yeah, a Philly. She called it perfect. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a perfect time. Now, yeah. it, like in, Right after that, it happened. It was good stuff. Did uh, she do it for the other one, though? No, I, she, I only saw her do you one. Know, we don't need to talk about that one. Well, we don't need yeah. to bring that one up. The combined? Uh, yeah. Yeah, fuck that game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it happens. Oh, that was the best when they're asking Schwarber, how do you feel you're going to be in history? How the fuck do you think I feel? Like, <laughs> what what question you, is that? <laughs> why would you ask that to someone? Like, I think the questions the media have are just ridiculous. Like, just everybody's trying to get a fucking story, like an, a, a bad story. Yeah. They don't even want, like, a good positive story. They just want, like, to say Schwarber's, like, Mad that they got no hit. Well, of course he's mad they got no hit. He had to go up there three times. It's the World Series. Like, yeah. You. Yeah. Next question, please. You see that 550 foot bomb I had? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I can still see that ball in San Diego. That's got to be the farthest ball you've ever seen hit in person, yeah. for sure. Well, I mean, yeah, probably otherwise. Well, I guess I saw CJ Crohn's. This season that went like I think he hit like a five hundred and five foot bomb or something, but yeah, in person. Jesus Christ, where was that? Was that in was was Colorado? That, yeah, was it in Colorado? Yeah, that doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess You're that's fair. Yeah. Two thousand miles up in the mountains. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you wish. Uh, no, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that we got to get you back on yeah. here. And yeah, we, you are so hard to get hold of. Uh, yeah, yeah, not, not a, um, it's tough. 
uh, yeah. to get back to some people. But so I'm glad we're happy sorry you are. That. Sorry, I've, I texted you twice. I was trying just to, you know, I didn't want to bug you, but because nah, we know how. Well, and that's the answer. Like I was going to say, the answer to the question because people ask me, like, well, you haven't had this person or or this person. And like we, we don't have, bug people. They're working. Like you guys yeah. are during the season. Like I like talking to Jordan down at. Like I didn't want to bother him either. I don't want to bother you. I've never wanted to bother Marcus or or any of the guys. Luke. Donnie, like we just. That this this is your work time. Like we try not to to bug the shit out of you guys. Well, but now I know he's not doing shit. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking bug you. Out. <laughs> we should do this podcast on the golf course next time. Dude, I am down. A hundred percent in. Yes, yes, we're doing that. Before you leave, we'll we'll figure some shit out. But uh, thanks for coming and doing this, man. Uh, good luck going forward. Yeah, year. congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Getting that nice big O N L champ ring. That'll be uh, getting that bonus. <laughs> Yeah, the it's all NLCS good. bonus, the World Series bonus. I think you came in in a fucking <laughs> private jet today. I came in in a rental. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you get sized yet? Have you been sized? I don't think we get rings, man. I think the NL champ, NLCS, NLCS and ALCS get yeah the winners of each division. Courtesy ring. Yeah, you get mm. a hey, you, you get a not ring many people get there for participating. We'll yeah. say no, you can't say that. No, I think the winner of the NL and the winner of the AL they get an AL championship ring and a National League championship. Maybe ring. I'm not sure. You never see them though. You don't. Yeah, you no, don't. It's going Maybe in the you don't. Cave. <laughs> let's get a World Series ring. Yeah, that's right? yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely good luck. Keep us posted. Uh, Maybe we can talk before you head out or get a couple guys in here to talk before you guys head out. So uh, uh, again, thank you for joining us. This is another episode of Hit or Die Podcast. Hit or Die.